All right, well, I guess I'll begin. I apologize ahead of time if this sucks since I'm going off the fly, but, you know, whatever, fuck it. So welcome to the Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines speedrunning tutorial. This is an update from the one I did, like, a couple years ago. Totally outdated route, and, um... You know, hopefully this will encourage someone else to pick up this game and uh, start running it. First stage, of course, you gotta install the game. Doesn't matter where you get it, standalone or Steam. I pretty much use the standalone version. Uh, you don't really have to pay for it and support Activision. Next, you wanna patch up to 1.2. This was the last official patch that Trokia Ga Troika Games was able to put out before they went out of business. This is easily found on the internet. We use this patch because it has advantages over the default or the community patches in terms of speed. Uh, the most common being doors that you can open from the other side that are fixed in the other one. However, there is an issue with those with patch 1.2. It has a really weird memory glitch where the game assumes that you couldn't possibly have more than two gigabytes of RAM so when you use more than two gigabytes of RAM, the game tells you that you must only have 15 megabytes of RAM and that it's unplayable. So to fix this, we've hex edited two DLL files, the engine and this Shaper Rapid X9 file to erase that game's assumption so the game is playable. You take both of these files, open up the base file for Vampire, and put them into the bin folder, replacing both of these should make the game playable. Included in this zip, which I will have available for download, and you can just ask me for it, or there's a link. Um, this is from the community patches. It also works, but um, only if the engine doesn't, if this official engine doesn't work. So after you got that all up, you can actually open the game and play it. You need to start configuring it. First step is open properties, add console, to the end of wherever you've installed Vampire. For Steam users, you have to open up the Steam library, right-click the game, navigate to launch options, and then you put uh, dash console. That'll let us uh, put in some keybinds and everything. I'll show you my keybinds here and my keyboard layout, although keyboard layout is of course a matter of preference. But first, go into the Vampire folder, go into the CFG folder, and this file won't be there if you've just made a fresh install, but you can create it in Notepad. Opening it up, I'll explain each of these. Uh, FOV and default FOV. Uh, by default, the field of view is set to 75. I think 90 is nicer. Matte draw water zero. Um, what you need this to do is it turns off the water textures in games, which is really janky and doesn't run well. So we just turn it off. This, uh, these two options turn off the head bobbing when running. Uh, matter of preference if you don't like it or if you, know, if you do, you can just keep it. Show pose and show FPS. Uh, this gives us some uh, informative stuff up at the top right. Um, I'll show you what that's used for later on. Uh, auto save on, we set this off. This turns off auto saving. By default, the game likes to auto save each time you transition. So each time there's a loading screen. Um, this can take anywhere between one to three seconds. Um, depends how far into the game you are. The longer you're in, the longer the autosave takes. So disabling this will save you a whole bunch of time overall because we're transitioning in and out of places all the time. Uh, lastly, we have V, char, skip intro. We turn this on. Uh, this allows us to skip the beginning intro, which is uh, pretty long. Do note that the first time you install the game, the game wants you to watch this opening cutscene. So even if you have this in your auto exec file, it uh, it won't show up until you've actually watched it for the first time. So once you have all of this here, you can save this. Uh, you can start entering keybinds into the actual game. I won't actually enter all of them in, but the basic format is bind. Uh, whatever key you're trying to bind it to, let's say X. And then in quotation marks, whatever the command is, or hotkey. So opening the config file, CFG, which is what the game edits anyways. Uh, notable, 
Um, I have jump put to mouse wheel down. I do leave it for space. Uh, between the two jumps, uh, jumping with space is kind of weird. It's like a, a larger jump, and it helps uh, set up the mouse wheel jumps, which is more like a hop, which allows us to bunny hop, much like uh, Half-Life or other sorts of games like that. So, mouse wheel for jumping. Let's see, next. I have O and P set to quick saving and quick loading. You do have to quick save and load twice during the run. They're mandatory, one for saving time, one so you, you can actually get through an area. Uh, I don't forget, I forget what these are by default, but setting them on the keyboard uh, allows you to uh, do them really quickly. Uh, next up, I have T, Y, and U set to use blood packs. Uh, if you don't have them set on your keyboard, you have to open up your menu and navigate to the blood packs in order to actually use them. So having them binded to certain keys uh, makes that go quite, uh, quicker. T, uh, these are the normal blood packs. Um, you use these most often, so I set them you know, closest to my uh, left hand. Uh, Elder Vitae's, these uh, heal you all the way. You only use these and the blue blood packs. They're just a little bit more blood than the normal ones. You use these during the end fight. So I just put them sort of off to the side because um, you only have to hit them uh, three times once and then you have one of these and two of these. So they're not as important. Um, moving down, these are very important here. Uh, mouse wheel four is the top mouse wheel button, top side wheel, top side wheel, the top side button. And this is the uh, bottom side button. I changed the FPS with these buttons, which is really important. By default, the max FPS is 300. This allows us to go really quick and allows for bunny hopping, but it doesn't let you interact with anything physical in the world. Uh, for example, doors, or um, in the temple area, there is a wooden stake that you have to move to the right in order to open the door, and at 300 FPS, you can't move it. So we have to set our, our uh, max FPS to 60 in order to interact with anything physical in the game. So whenever I go through a door, I hit the top left side mouse button, and then I switch back to this FPS and start uh, bunny hopping. It's a little weird at first, but um, hey, it lets you go fast. Uh, the only other thing to note here, I guess, is... Oh, hello. The only other thing to note here is uh, I put shift as duck. Total preference, I, ju I just think that it's uh, more comfortable that way. So, after you got your whole keyboard layout all set up and everything, you can actually get into running the game. Alright. So there's two main categories for uh, Vampire Bloodlines. Well, I just gotta readjust some things here. Like I said, there's two main categories for uh, Vampire Bloodlines. The first and the uh, like true at the moment any percent is Tremere. Tremere's have a lot of amazing abilities, and we'll go through them in a second. I just need to open up my convo thing so I don't mess up and tell people the wrong conversations. There's only two conversations I don't have fully memorized. Okay. Okay. So I'll get into them. Uh, the, the main one, like I said, is Tremere. The other one is Gangrel. First thing to note, for whatever reason in the game, the female character moves faster overall than the male characters. So you always want to play as a female because they just move faster for whatever reason. So here's the Tremere. To start out, they have th Thaumaturgy. This is really, this is the most overpowered set of disciplines in the game by far. Um, blood Strike, this is a projectile. It only costs one blood and it returns two blood to you if you're in the right position. And it does a lot of damage. It scales not based on your level, but on the level of the thing that you're hitting. So even though we're not going to be, you know, leveled up all that far, the Blood Strike will always deal good damage to whatever you're hitting. And it returns blood, and it's a projectile. So, it's just amazing. The second thing we get is Purge. 
Uh, this is an AoE attack, and it uh, makes everybody uh, throw up, which means they can't attack you or do anything while they're throwing up. So it's a nice AoE, and it deals an like, alright amount of damage. The other thing that Tremere start off with is Trance. <clears throat> also cost one blood. You take out a target, and this is really important because for some reason this game decided that certain enemies in the game trigger other enemies to spawn. However, if you trance them before they notice you and the game actually triggers, you can stop them from ever spawning those people. And so this is important to do in certain times. And you start off with it in the game, so it's nice. The other important thing that they can level up all the way is scholarship. What scholarship raises is per research and persuasion. Persuasion being the important one, because there's a lot of dialogue in this game, and this allows us to meet every single check that we need to uh, accomplish in this room. Next we get up with Wits because it gets up your defense. Um, the other things, Intimidate, not really important. Research, not really important. Inspection, not important. So you might as well get the extra defense. Here we get Strength. Uh, we do end up using Unarmed primarily. Um, dexterity, I guess, could help. It raises your lockpicking a little bit. Um, but we have blood uh, boil or blood buff, which ups our lock picking to get through every door in the game, anyways, and we already up that. Then we get brawl again because we used unarmed. And uh, what am I missing here? Oh, one more wits. Then of course we hit skip intro. Now I'll show you the. Um, the setup for Gangrel. I'm going to do each of these at the same time because uh, there's not really too much discrepancy between the two of them. So for Gangrel, they have protein. This gives them claws and it's alright. It helps them with their unarmed a bit. Animalism is kind of like Thaumaturgy. Uh, this Nightwish Ravens is basically like Trance, which is Dominate. You know, in that dominate discipline where it incapitates them, it just uses ravens instead of them looking all crazy. Now, this is called burrowing beetle. We start off with this. Uh, it's basically blood strike, except it doesn't deal as much damage. Um, it doesn't return any blood to you, but you can fire it faster. Interestingly, so you can actually do a pretty good amount of damage with this. Let's see. Um, next, we get up scholarship. They can only get it up once. Um, we fix that later on though. They can get their lock picking up a lot, and their brawl, and their physical strength, and their wits. Comparable to the um, Tremere. I'm gonna play as a Tremere though, I think, because I think that'll be uh, better. Since Tremere right now is the fastest uh, group, so let me get all ready up here again. Okay, so this is the first prompt of the tutorial of the game, and this is where the timing starts. As soon as you hit left click, you can start uh, timing the game. I'm not going to use a timer, but just pretend like, you know, time go. Then we run off to the left and we talk to Jack. What a scene, man. Woo -wee. Woo -wee. Now, you can skip dialogue by pressing uh, any of the numbers to go on. Eventually, I'm going to have a list of dialogues or something so that it's easier. Or, I think Elemental Guard has a list of uh, dialogues. I should be able to get a link for that. Otherwise, you're going to want to write these down. There is a lot of dialogue to memorize in this game, but a lot of it is just mashing one. For example, this one. One, three, three, one. And we're done with that. What we basically did there was we skipped the tutorial. Hello, LA. As much as I like the radio, let's turn her off. So this is the starting position. Um, I guess I should go through some basic movement stuff first, huh? That'll probably be easier. I'm not going to explain what bunny hopping is. I'm not going to explain what um, you know a lot of this stuff is. But what I can explain is this. Every time you load a level, there's a fade-in. So say I reloaded where I just loaded, boom. 
As you can see in the upper right hand corner, that's the show pose. You saw, you saw how the numbers appeared before the game, you know, faded all the way in. And you can actually move during that. So watch the numbers. I'm already moving during the fade-in. Now that's important because a lot, some strips are based off of the fade-in and you can either screw up the game or you can go, you know, a lot faster depending on that. Again, bunny hopping, um, wall running is all here. There's a few other basic things I guess I could explain right now. Um, feeding is based on strength. It's another reason we up strength. Um, each time you feed on a victim, you automatically gain one health, one blood point. Even though the thing doesn't move up. It's kind of weird. So let me get back to the intro. And I'll just go through the route. This on the fly tutorial going so well. So again, start timer, go to the left. One, two, three, three, one. And just spam through it like that. So here we come, the fade in timer's coming. We can move to the left and automatically get these. And then we need this money. You can press escape to get out of menus quicker. You can also just press exit. I'm not sure it's a preference. Now, say I'm gonna go through this door. You can see at the top right, my FPS is changing based on what button I'm pushing. This is what happens when I try and go through the door normally. As you can see, it doesn't really work that well. The door closes really slowly. Now, watch what happens when I change the FPS. As you can see, I can actually force my way through the door. And the door opens faster. So every single time you go through a door, you want to change FPS and then change back. So for this particular hallway, you can open this door, glide down, jump, hit this lamp, and go on. Now here's another example where the fade in timer is going to help. I start moving to the left, and I trigger this cutscene as this guy is trying to talk to me. And we end up here. So now we have to go over here to the pawn shop. Now as you enter here, you can change your FPS and you can kind of ride these doors. And this is what I mean. Oh, it didn't really work. Then change FPS, go back to this guy. Spam three. And this is what we came here for. We buy the lockpick and we leave. If you go fast enough, this door will stay open for you. That's the only item we need to buy in the game. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory what it does. It lets you lock pick and you know, pick locks. Now we need to start bunny hopping. And we need to go down here to the pier. Here, you can bunny hop while crouching. And if you're at the right height as you're bunny hopping, you can be crouched and then stand up. This doesn't always work and uh, you can help keep your momentum and you can, uh, you know, get through doors this way. The interesting thing with the ducking mechanic is um, when you jump, you see how it moved the character upwards? That's important to know. Hey, how's it going guys? So here we go, we go down here. Now normally we would have talked to the quest guy, but instead we're going to skip talking to him and go straight to the pier. Now this gate is locked and we're normally not supposed to be able to get up there. However, walking along this edge, 
and doing a circle hop and crouching at the right time, which like I said, moves you upwards. will allow you to get over the fence. Now, this is the only area where this works, but there's a trigger up there. And when we can kind of jump into it. I don't know why, but you have to jump first and then kind of jump, crouch into it. Now here, this is how we come in the fade in. You can, while you're in fade in, you can stand up and go up these stairs. Now this is the first level. Well, all we have to do here is get the bomb, which is conveniently right in that window over here. So what I do is I line up with this bloody plank thing, jump, crouch, and jump right into the window, grab it, and then we can leave. Now you don't want to jump and get it from here because these guys will warp to you. I have no idea why the game does that. But it warps them to you. So by getting onto the window ledge there, you can avoid getting hit by them, which is important. You don't want to get hit there. It wastes time because you get staggered like that. Oh, cool. Source runs marathon. Uh, yeah, I'll have to look at that. Be neat. So again, um, what we got there was the bomb early. Now going, uh, I should mention this, going up slopes like this high you can't you can like kind of bunny hop up them or you can shimmy left to right which is faster than um, just walking normally so here we wall right up to here now unfortunately we still have to talk to Mercurio but normally we're supposed to talk to him and then go do that mission so instead we're just gonna talk to him twice Dialogue one, two, one, all the way through. So we can just mash one after that. Now after that dialogue's done, he just told you to go get that bomb stuff. Well, we've already got it. So one, 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 mash one, all the way through. Right until he says this, now we mash four, and we're done. All right, cool, Coos, thanks. All right, so now, having done Mercurial's quest, we need to go talk to Jeanette. She's, of course, in her club. So we bunny hop around to here. Now, this is a weird use of the fade-in timer, and this is the only time you'll use the fade-in timer like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk in this door. I'm going to wait a second, which causes Jeanette to run towards me, which makes it so that she doesn't talk to me right away, and then I can get in front of the bartender. Like this. Now I'm in front of the bartender, and the dialogue options here are three, two, one. Hopefully she doesn't get blocked by any of the club attendants. But now we're gonna move our mouse to the left, and if you've done this correctly, you should be able to talk to the bartender Oh, there he is. Three, three, one to get through that. Um, and then you can move during the cutscene, which is nice. Alright, now we have to operate this elevator. And this elevator sucks. You don't want to hit this button right away. You want to wait a second. You need to give the elevator some time. This is what happens if you use the elevator too fast. You run in... Oh, I gave it time. <laughs> Alright, I'll hit it early next time. Uh, coming up in the route, this is where we use a quick save. Normally we have to sit through this long conversation and this door is locked, right? By saving and loading, we can skip that and now I can just get in. Now, when you talk to people, you want to smash E so that you talk to them as far away as possible. You can talk to people from quite a distance. For this conversation, it's one, 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 two, one, two, one, one. Now, you can just mash one through that, but those dialogue options were me being nice to Therese, which in my opinion makes it 
um, easier for the conversation later on where you have to choose whether or not you save both of them, which we save both of them. Um, I'm not sure if it really matters, I do it. So, go through this door. Now I'll hit the elevator too early. As you can see, it fucked itself up. It was like, nah dude, that's, that's too fast, slow down. I'm an elevator. And you gotta hit the button again. So every time you interact with this elevator, just give it a second. You know, let it load. Okay, so now we have to go to the Ocean Hotel. Start by going off to the left here. And you can crouch. This is the only this is the only time where this is useful. <laughs> um, when we get into this sewer, what I do is I back up onto the ladder, then go down, and I jump. Which pushes me forward that distance. Otherwise, this is what it looks like when you go forward like this, just holding uh, forward. However, um, you know, jumping is also kind of janky. So what I do instead is you look kind of up to the right, and then you hold D, which, you know, moves to your right. And then you start going a little bit faster for some reason. I have no idea why this is a thing. As you can see, it's it moves her quicker. So, now coming out, we can get a little boost there. Open this door. Now from this elevator, I like to do a little hop once I get to here, because you can jump up and hit this door, and kind of hit it, and then you fall, and you know, it's whatever. Alright, now we run forward, and here's the infamous hotel everyone loves when they play this game. Switch to blood buff, and pick this door. Now when it gets to the K, you can do that, and it uh, makes it go just a little bit faster. Alright. Entering the hotel, I like to switch up to purge, just in case you accidentally use a skill again. Um, this you can only use if there's targets, so that's why I do that. Uh, so, what normally happens here is you go up these stairs and you get sucked downwards. Let's make sure I don't fuck this up. <laughs> so, what I do is I run forward, and then going up these stairs, I'm going to jump and crouch. Oh, I, like, broke it. <laughs> and what this does is this lets us jump over it. See, this is what normally happens, is you get sucked down here and there's nothing you can do about it. And you can do a little turn there, because you need to go this way. So you can skip that just by crouch jumping over it. Now we go through here, jump over here, and we need to open up this door. Take this key, and leave. Now, you'll know, like, sometimes, I swear I'll hit the button to take the key, and then I don't get it. But you'll know that you got it, because this uh, the ghost girl will show up over there. So, you'll know if you screwed up or not. Now uh, we can kind of bunny hop through here, get over here, open this door, and open this, jump down, stay to the right, you can kind of jump and hit this. Now this elevator's weird, like watch, if I'm stuck in it, it won't do anything. Now it's on a timer, so you have to wait for it for a second, but you need to be in the right position for it. You can even like stall it right here, I think. You can, like, try and make it crush you. But it won't crush you. Like, it's, like, set so that it won't crush you. So now you open this as soon as possible, and then you... Well, as you're coming down, you'll kind of be lined up with this book, which is what you need to grab. Okay, now I should explain this room because it's, it's really weird. What we need to go is go through this door, which is locked. This microwave is going to slam into this door... But the trigger for that happening is me taking damage. Now, what I used to do is I used to pick up this and just try and like shield and it was, it was, but that doesn't work. What we do now is we just stand right here, get as close as we can as top of it, and this pan is gonna hit us every time. Boom. Move over here. This pan's through and we jump through. Now you wanna take as little damage as possible there because coming up is a really long hallway full of steam that if you're not at full health, it's gonna kill you. 
So it kind of sucks that you have to take damage there to trigger this door, but then you have to take like maximum damage later on. So anyways, we can kind of crouch jump and press E just to get through here. Now whenever you're, you're in vents like this with an angle, you can jump and it'll like knock you forward really fast. So that's cool. Press shift, don't get hit by that. <laughs> Once it like does that shaking thing, you're usually at the top and you can jump to get to this ledge. Then using your mouse and just like holding against the wall, you can kind of get in through here. Next we want to go to our left here. Now there's a pot that's going to be flying at you. Optimally you can get like this and you can like hug the ledge and kind of get past it without taking any damage. Now for this one, ah, okay, you see how that flamp, oh there it is. That flamp usually flies at you and if you bunny hop correctly, you get hit by it and then you can get flown, like, flown through all through this. And it's really fast and it looks cool. So going up here, we jump up here, do a crouch jump up to there, through this door. Now here's the hallway of pain. Uh, you can just like crouch under it and not take the damage if you've taken too much damage, but of course that is slower than just jumping through here. As you can see, if I had taken that other damage, I would have been almost dead. Um, so now when you open this door, there's like a little mini sort of cutscene where it goes back to how the hotel used to be. And you skip this. Oop. You skip this if you jump. So jump through that door. Grab the pendant. And then you go through this door. Change the FPS so the door goes a little faster. And then you need to wait for this. Go down. And now we can leave. And say goodbye to Ghost Girl again. Once we're here, we can do a little circle jump to here. And jump back to the sewer. Now, what I found is that it's uh, actually quicker to open up your menu here and let the door close. Because then you can reopen it faster. Okay, jump down here, back to the sewer we came into. Uh, you can sort of jump in there. Again, use the quick way to go through tunnels. And back up. Alright, so the next quest that the game is supposed to put you on is... Alright, that's using the fade-in to stop the elevator from... You can get to it quicker and then you don't have to wait as long for the thing. Uh, what was I saying? Right. So we're gonna go talk to Therese. The next quest that uh, we're gonna supposed to do is the um, slashing of the paintings. However, we can skip that. Press 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So what we did is we refused to give the pendant to her. I don't think Troika Games thought this option through. I don't think they actually expected anyone to actually do this option, because this is where you're supposed to meet Officer Chunk, and you're supposed to fight that thing that comes out of the paintings, and it explains Kane and all that, but we skip all that. So we go out the door, and we just turn around and immediately go back in. You don't even see it happen. Go back, up here, and what we did that for is basically that turns uh, uh, Jeanette back into Therese. And we need to talk to Therese in order to give her the pendant and move the game on, so... You... what were you thinking? Uh, for there, usually, you know, you open up the... You know, because it just zooms you right into that conversation, you can just walk straight into that door. You don't need to change the FPS or anything. For this whole conversation, you just mash one. The museum... Shut up. Don't lie. Excellent. Jeanette. There's only... I asked... I want to see my sister. Oh, I should note for Gangrel. At this point in the game, you have to level up your scholarship to get your persuasion up to in order to actually give her the pendant. I have no idea why you have to update your or um, upgrade your persuasion in order to give her the pendant to prove that you have it. But hey, what do you know? Okay, now we need to go to the diner. 
Oh, this is a good opportunity to explain how some of the default hotkeys work for disciplines. Um, pressing one is uh, fists, two, oh, I don't have the gun yet, but that's for a gun. Three is auspect, five and six automatically put us to trance, seven automatically puts us to blood strike, and eight automatically puts us to purge. This is really important because normally you're supposed to be able to scroll through these with your mouse button, but since you have mouse wheel down set to jump like this, you only really have mouse wheel up, so it's important to know these hotkeys by default. So again, purge eight, blood strike seven, trance five and six. For gangrel, um, it's different. I forget what it is exactly, but it's like the one, two, and three keys are actually better. Yeah, it might be a glitch, um, the not being able to give her the pendant. I'm not sure. It's annoying. <laughs> it's just what you gotta do. You have to level it up twice anyways, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the diner. I gotta make a save here. There's two important things about the diner. The first thing is you have to go quick. If you take too long, the police will show up. The second part is you need to end the fight on a feed. You want to end it on a feed for two reasons. One, to get more blood, because you're just going to naturally need more blood throughout the run. And two, because this seems to, present, or to prevent the cops from coming. So I'll show you how this works on Tremere. It's a lot more difficult on Gangrel. Now we have to wait for Purge to work, but pretty much we want to want this sort of setup. Now you want to punch him into the feed. Usually you can do that a lot faster, and you can do that while he's still vomiting. And that's like the quickest way to feed on people normally, is to just punch them first, because it lowers their defenses, and the game like doesn't calculate the strength and stuff like it usually should. So anyways, now we talk to that phone, you just mash 1 to get through it, and hopefully the police don't show up and you can get away. Other things that can happen is that door is locked permanently and I just don't know why, it just happens. So now we need to go back because, uh, you know, the girls are having a meltdown. Now this is one of the longest conversations in the game. Um, it is a lot to mash through, <laughs> unfortunately, and um, this is an opportunity for her to soft lock. She can just not turn around and talk to you, which kind of sucks. So first you mash one because it tells you to. Second, mash two. Now it's three. One, two. Three times. Now you get two. Now back to three. One. Two, three. Now we just hit one the rest of the way. Here, I'll mute this. Yes, when I was slightly happier, I never know. I'll stop. That's not. We know. Take it. Bertram's. Please get and keep your time. Now the reason it's faster to save both of them is that it uh, warps you down here when you save both of them. It doesn't do that when you only save one of them. I'm really not sure why. It also gives you an extra experience point, which doesn't really matter, but I guess it's kind of nice. So now we need to bunny hop down here, open this gate, and talk to the Nosferatu. One, one, three, two. Oh, the little shimmy walking. Yeah, I should mention that. So, when you walk forward, you'll notice the player velocity is the very last number on the upper right. At default, it's 93, but when you hold like right and left, you see how it jumps up more to like 200. So when you shimmy back and forth, you can get really high numbers. So this is the ultimate way to move around if you're not bunny hopping or, you know, doing anything else. So, yeah. Good call, Akuz. So anyways, here we go. We're going to start here, kind of jump through here. Here you want to do like a shift jump, go through these two doors, move that. Yo, 
Those guys can be annoying and they can definitely block you. This guy can hit you, but it doesn't matter as long as you're on the ladder. You want to shift into here. Ugh, pardon me. Now you want to stand up and kind of do like a duck jump over those because it's faster. And then you can stand up and go down, which is also a little bit faster. Change the FPS and then change it back. Otherwise, you have a really high chance of falling. Now run through here. Now, this is where the game has a bit of randomness. There are two guards in the next area. And what I want them to, to do is I want them to be in the front area of this office. And I want to get past both of them. And I want to trance one of them in the door. Blocking the other one. Now, if I can't do that, what I want to do is I want to trance the one dude who is usually shooting at you. Because you're like crouching down as you're setting up this bomb, the guy who is attacking you with a knife won't actually be able to hit you. Like your character won't, like your hitbox isn't available to him. But the guy who is shooting at you has a chance of hitting you, and if you get hit it cancels the bombing timer setup thing. So you don't want that to happen. So let's see what sort of randomness I get here. Okay. Oop. So I get hit a little bit. As you can see, he can't hit me. He's really good at this, though. And yeah, you can look around while you're setting that up. Now, trance this guy, and you want to leave... Ooh, shoot. If you're taking a lot of damage, you can press T, you know, just use a blood pack. And what you want to do is get down here, and that guy is not uh, solid up until he gets through there. So what you can do is get past all of those guys and jump down to here, and no one's going to chase you or anything. Now the next part of this is normally what you're supposed to do is go in through that door and go around and crouch out here. But what the game thinks is that um, you're getting chased, right? So there's this big chase scene, and what you're supposed to be able to do is like shoot out this, and this falls onto this, which explodes. And then you can take out, uh, you know, the Sabat vampire that's after you. But we can actually trigger this explosion by duck jumping on top of it. And what this allows us to do is gain a lot of momentum, and we can jump over this fence and get a lot of speed. That was really weak. <laughs> it's one of the hardest things to get right in this game, and I've, it's hard as hell to optimize because that could just happen, or... You know, you just don't get the right, you know, explosion, pretty much. Like, that was incredibly mediocre. The optimal way to do that is, um, you jump, and what you do is you land on top of here, and then you jump on top of the car rails, and if you go fast enough, you can make enough momentum that you get all the way back to where we need to trigger the end of this mission, which is over here. Now, you can't just get, a, like, a mediocre blast, you know. As long as you get over the fence, you're going faster than what uh, was normally intended. Okay, so the default position for talking back is that there. Walk forward, and then two. Mesh two, two, three, and then one. Uh, coming out of here, you can hold right and left, or forward and right, and get out here. We, need, we now need to go to the taxi, because we're done um, with the first set of Santa Monica quests. And we can talk from this guy from far away, and you can just immediately hit downtown. You can navigate this uh, particular menu really quickly. And unfortunately, we have this cutscene that we are unable to skip, and it takes two minutes. But where it takes you is downtown. Right to here. So after you sit through that cutscene, what you're going to do is we got to go talk to the, um, to the, uh, who the hell are those guys? The Brujas. The, um, we got to go talk to Nines, pretty much. And they're over here. talk up here. This guy's going to talk to you automatically. Just hit three. We're done with him. And then from here, it's not too much farther just to talk to him. 
Hit one, then three all the way through. Turn around, and we're done. It's so mad that we don't get to talk to her. Anyways, now we have to go back and talk to LaCroix. This is one of the areas where you get a lot of room to bunny hop. I'm just kind of... This isn't that fast. Okay, so now we're in front of LaCroix's building. I'm going to make a safety save here because we're about to talk to the worst NPC in this game. One, two, two... Okay, this is Officer Chunk. Officer Chunk, you have to talk to him multiple times throughout this run, and he is the most likely NPC to softlock on you. He will softlock if you talk to him while the fade-in timer is still happening. He will softlock on you if you cancel the, the, um, the fade-in timer. So don't open the, the menu and, you know, stop the fade-in or he'll get messed up. Don't talk to him if he's standing up. And don't go through his dialogue options too quickly at first. You have to be really nice to Chunk. He's not the fastest NPC and he will kill the most runs if you don't um, respect him, pretty much. Now, um, usually you can get to this elevator before it opens and every time you can kind of angle yourself so that you hit the button right away. Now run forward and mash E so you talk to LaCroix as fast as possible. One, one, just mash one, mash one, up until he says yes. Oh, he says good. Now we hit three and then two. Just keep hitting two. He's going to tell you some stuff, doesn't matter, because now you just got to leave. Okay, so every time you come out of this building, you're going to be right here, and you can kind of do a jump and talk to this guy before the fade-in happens. And we need to go back to Santa Monica because we need to go on to the Elizabeth Dane. Now, every time you go back to, an, to a new area or something like this, for some reason you're always in third person, and you actually move a little bit slower when you're in third person. So, uh, by default, switching views is Z. So during the fade and I just hit Z and then just start, you know, bunny hopping. So we go here, do a little hop here, down back to the pier area. Now the Elizabeth Dane is really hard in terms of not like there's a really weird trigger which is after this boat and the trigger for leaving the Elizabeth Dane is successfully talking to this guy and convincing him that you're a reporter it seems to be the only way to get off and if you talk to him too fast you see how he's saying all this stuff he'll just continue to say it over and over again if you talk to him too fast you can just mash one through this whole conversation Sometimes so fast you quit the gun and you press Z again. Now these doors are pretty slow even with 60 FPS, so I just leave 60 FPS on going through. Now we can unlock this. We need to switch to blood buff. Again, use it. And now we need to use blood buff on the next door too. We can just go right for it. Kind of skips going through that door. And then we grab the ship manifest. Go up here. This room will be clear because you talk to the guy. Go to this. Control. Password is Lighthouse. Hit enter again. Deck cams on. Good. You can hit escape twice. Rotate this a whole bunch of times until that happens. And now we can leave. Oh. Uh, we can leave. Yes. <laughs> Again, I just like to keep it at 60 FPS for that part, because you just have to go through so many doors. And now we want to jump down. We can take damage sometimes, that's fun. 
All right, now we got to go back to the taxi. Do a little stand up bunny hop there because you need to crouch beyond those walls. Uh, a la Golden Isle. Golden. <laughs> A la Golden Isle style, if you look at the ground, you'll actually gain some FPS sometimes. Because um, there's a lot of NPCs that can uh, kill your frame rate. Alright, I'll save again because we have to talk to Officer Chunk again. I don't want him to soft lock on me. One and. I just do one and two. It doesn't really matter there. There's a little cutscene here. Unfortunately, you can't move forward during the fade in for it for some reason. But said all I need to for now. That only save a you know a minor amount of time, if any. So now we shimmy our way forward and mash E again. Now this one is one, one, three. One oh fuck. Two that was supposed to be two. But it doesn't matter. Otherwise, he talks about how you're supposed to just do what he says and whatnot. And again, we can leave. Now we need to go up to Grove's Mansion, which is up here. You can move forward a little bit during that cutscene. Uh, it can cause nines, well, fake nines, to kind of uh, mess up there. Oh, I should have mentioned for dialogue. Um, the very first dialogue that someone speaks, if you're already mashing a button, you'll just skip the text. No. You get... Otherwise, you'll hear like a little bit of it. I should have mentioned that before. So now we can switch to whoa, switch to trance. Go up here. I don't know why I was facing that way. Through the fade in, change that, change uh, FPS, and go through the door. We can do a shift jump because uh, these are physical. To like a degree. <laughs> they're not always physical. If you're jumping through them, it's fine. But if you like try and just move through them, they're they're physical for some reason. We can like, shimmy our way through this door. Now, um, this is supposed to be a puzzle. However, the puzzle is solved when the light is on like that in the middle there for him. So we just run and hit this puzzle on the left repeatedly until it works out. It's a really hard puzzle. Okay, now we can go through these doors. Now you can either choose to jump through this like that, but I found that it's actually a bit, a little bit faster if you can get a bit of speed and kind of jump through here and do that. And what you want to do is, you see these guys, they're just kind of sitting there, hanging out, and they don't aggro you. They are triggered by that guy. If this guy growls, these guys will activate and attack you. So you want to trance him without him seeing you. Same with this guy. There's always one of these guys in every room for this building. So optimally, you don't uh, arise these guys' attentions, and you just come in and hit this. And then we go up the stairs. Do a little wall ride around here, jump to the left, and go up the stairs. You can waddle up the stairs, you know, do the faster walking. Now as you get up to here, this is, this is weird. Don't hit this door too early, because you see how that happened? There's actually a trigger that is right here, where, here, I'll show you, where you see I'm actually like way above and there's a replica down there. For some reason the game warps you up to here, which is like a, def a different area. And what it's supposed to do is show you like this texture up here, which is hard, fire, like higher up than the rest of the level or whatever. <laughs> so it's 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 yeah, it's so weird. But you want to wait till you get to the top of the stairs and then open this door, and then open this door, and we go down. Okay, now here's here's where I just warped, as you can tell, because you'll see this guy spawn. <clears throat> now. This is part of the way that um, attacking works. If I just attack, this guy is in our way. If I attack normally, I throw that sort of punch. 
But if I go to the left, I throw a swinging punch. And what that'll do here, maybe I can show you guys the difference right now. So say I just hit him. See how he doesn't get out of our way? Oh, I forgot that reloading adds some weird scripts. Okay, whatever. So now if I go... Oop, I missed. Oh, I'm doing it wrong. Hold on. <laughs> if you put your... Go to the left side of the screen, when you're right up in, in front of him, you'll instead throw that punch and move him out of the way. And then we can go down here. Open this door. Don't worry about trancing this guy. You can just get through here. Jump over this. Hit this switch and just kind of wait. Yeah, they don't make these noises if you don't um, reload. They're like the scripts load or something. I forget what happens. It's weird. Alright, that guy, as you can see, he's like warping around and whatnot. Oh, I'm about to get attacked. <laughs> Usually you want to go around this corner and then jump. And then if he's going to block you, it'll be... Uh, he won't be an issue. Alright, so now we gotta jump here. Another puzzle. The answer is three hits here and one here, and you can do that really quickly, as fast as you can hit the button, so. Which opens that door. I've tried to clip up here. I really wish there was a skip. That'd be really cool. Jump down. And now we can go down here. Oops. Hit this switch. You can hit this through the door, kind of, like, as soon as you're right there. Kills this one, go to the right. Kill this one, go back, and hit this one. That's the uh, optimal way to get through this puzzle. Can then do a little shift. Crouch, hit this, and then jump. You could still hear the movement, even though the cutscene was happening. I was still moving forward from the jump, so you get a little bit of momentum there. Again, go through here. <clears throat> Ugh. Now, there's a weird little glitch that can happen in this room. So what I like to do to avoid it is be in the air as I'm entering this room so that I can move down. Now, you want to get a really quick trance on that guy. Um, you just need to know the positioning. Because otherwise he sets off all these guys in this room. And that sucks. Now, you grab that key and you come through here. Open this door and just grab all these blood packs. What this just gave you was a bunch of these blood packs, just normal blood packs, and you get Elder Vitae. These are the most important items in the game because um, later on during a fight, we're going to be spamming um, blood strike at people, and this will give us enough blood to get through that, uh, that particular fight. So we have to grab those. So now we can jump down here. Now, in Tremere this guy is just sitting here at the door with gangrel for some reason this guy is just walking around and doing whatever so this part's a little different with Tremere you can just walk up on this guy and you get a free feed he won't notice you well sometimes he'll notice you which is annoying and he sets everyone off but normally you can just get a free feed there go through this guy's annoying he sets everyone off Uh, you kind of want to change FPS as you're hitting this guy, because otherwise he won't move far enough over. We can then go through here, up to here. Climbing this is a little weird. you got to jump, jump, shift, and then shift, jump again. It's a little weird. Go through the door, up to here. And now we're going to trigger this cutscene. Just like with the last lever, you can kind of jump and move while the cutscene's happening, get closer to the door where we're trying to get to. And just enter the door as quickly as possible. There's going to be another trick uh, cutscene here. We can move a little bit during the fade in, but this is going to trigger regardless. Through this door, we just mash one. 
Now, we can aim this door. We can open that door before he does. And it kind of lets us get through there a little quicker. I obviously didn't do that, but... This is where you need to go. Through this hallway, you can get a nice uh, amount of momentum. And then you should be able to bunny hop through this guy, like through there. I didn't get it, but, you know, whatever. Again, bunny hop through here. Optimally, you don't have to trance this guy, but it's safe. Hit that. Now, that takes a little bit, so you can just kind of move around while the loading's happening. <laughs> now we jump down, turn to your right, and exit. Okay. Now, this set of dialogue options that you take with Officer Chunk is really important. You need to take the first dialogue option, not the second one. And if he does not talk about space burgers, he's soft locked on you, and he will not talk to you the next time you go to talk to him. Now, through this whole conversation, you just hit one, one. I'll go at once, one, and the last one is two. But yeah, if. Officer Chunk is not talking about space burgers at that point. He's definitely soft locked on you and your run's over. So that sucks. Definitely take the first option, not the second one. He doesn't say anything if you take the second option, and for some reason he just he soft locks. Okay, so now we gotta go to the museum. The museum is another one of these quests where you start off in third person for no reason, so you gotta hit Z during the fade in. You also want to switch to blood buff as you're going down here. Huh. Do a little shift jump. Okay, now you want to hope that these guards aren't gonna hit, like hit you as you're lock picking. They didn't even notice me. Now get through these doors, and you see you don't have a lot of blood at this point. You want to make sure you get to this second door before your blood buff ends. Otherwise, you're gonna have to blood buff again, and that wastes a lot of blood. So now you jump down here, head to your right, and then your left. If you're lucky, the police will like hit you with a few bullets here, and you'll actually get a nice little back boost. So now we need to hit this. It's 2358. Hit this door. Run and hit this door. Grab this key that we need. And then, there we go. Yeah, you shouldn't need to open that door if you go fast enough. Now we can bunny hop down here. Go through here now. You're supposed to, you can navigate through this, but screw that. We're just gonna jump through it, do a somersault. Now, hopefully this guy walks forward, but he doesn't, because you need to trance him to get the key card off of him. And if he walks forward, it saves a bit of time. I, I have this weird theory that doing the somersault actually makes him walk forward sometimes, but I, I can't prove it. Uh, so now we gotta talk to Beckett again. Dialogue options here. One, two, 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 and three. Alright. So now we're back to downtown. That was our last downtown mission. I'm gonna save again. And we gotta talk to Officer Chunk. Hopefully he still will talk to you at this point. I just go with one and two there. I always try to be as mean as possible to Officer Chunk as I can. Uh, for this position, he's always standing here at the window after the museum, so you gotta kinda like trail off to the left and go a little farther. This whole conversation is just mashing one, so I'm just gonna mash one. He then warps you down here, which is nice, so. And now we gotta go to Hollywood. Which is right here. Right in the center of the map, nicely. Again, as soon as this fade in hits uh thing, you gotta hit Z now. Um, there's gonna be this guy running at you, and he wants you he wants to talk to you and tell you that you gotta go talk to this guy that I'm already gonna go talk to. So just immediately go down here and just go talk to him. Do that so you see the chair go up and down every time. I love it. And then you gotta talk to him. This whole dialogue is just one. Yeah. 
Now, we have to wait for him to say this. Consider yourself a welcome guest in my barony. Welcome to Hollywood. For whatever reason, uh, if you don't wait for him to say all that, he'll repeat himself from the beginning. Um, and it's just, you just waste time. Now, this girl is the best NPC in the game because she is always walking down this corridor as you leave here. She's always here. She's always there to get fed on, which is awesome because you need blood at this point in the game. The only uh, trouble is you saw that guy who was walking down the street. Sometimes instead of walking this way, he can walk across the street and then he'll walk this way, but he'll cause a masquerade violation, which is uh, annoying. I can get the police on you and that wastes a real, like a lot, like over three minutes of time wasted. Okay, so after we feed on her, we're gonna bunny hop, get Trance out, and Trance, that's our uh, childhood friend. She comes walking up to you and wants to talk to you. Um, you can also deactivate her from talking to you by uh, firing a gun. That's how the old route did it. But trancing is just a lot easier, a lot cleaner. The police don't have a chance of coming after you. So now we gotta go into the internet cafe. Run over here, this chair is always in the way, and we're gonna have to use this computer later. So we just move that. You can move that too, but you know, whatever. Go to this computer, type email. The password is Kafka. Boom. Press enter. One. Got it. Escape three times, and then we can leave. Now the old route went that way, and then went around. But it's actually faster to go this way because there's more space to bunny hop and less NPCs. So you can just go this way and you gotta talk to this guy. One, two, one, and then four. Now from this position, you need to look this way because this guy has a habit of, he'll either like take a big run around you or he'll do what he's about to do, which is just run straight away. It saves like maybe a second. And you'll always get it coming from this position, as long as you're looking this way. So, go back the way you came. And now we have one of the jankiest skips in this game. This is called the early tape skip. So there's two tapes that we need to get for Isaacs. I think his name's Isaac, yeah. So, we need to get the information for the first tape from this computer. So, it's SZ. Swan, Ginger, got that, escape two times. Now, normally what's supposed to happen is we go get that tape, and then we have to find the second tape, which is actually up here, but the door is locked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get intentionally stuck in this door right here. And the way I do that is I go to max FPS, and I move two steps back using A, which is, you know, left, and then forward. Now, you don't want to go forward too hard, and you want to kind of start over here from this uh, post. It's kind of a feeling thing, and you want to have uh, your character angled kind of at the door. So it's like this. Now, you see the um, camera position in the top right corner. It's the third from the bottom. Where it says negative 33.97, that's the indication of where I look to see if I'm climbing up the door. So how this works is when you get permanently stuck in this game and then you quick save and reload, the game pushes you upwards. In other games it pushes you in other directions, I don't know why, in Bloodlines it pushes you upwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb up this door, clip through the ceiling, and then I don't have to go through that key card or the hotel or any of that stuff. But first I gotta get stuck in this door. So like I said, get the right angle, two steps back, one forward. The door should slowly move forward, and you'll know you're stuck because you literally can't move. There we go, I got it. Now let's see, I gotta climb up. You gotta hit the buttons as soon as you see the numbers change, pretty much. And as you can see, the negative's going upwards. Now it's at 17. Now it's at 35. What we're looking for is 92 something or other. Oh, and as you can see, I'm actually dropping. So the door closed on me. <laughs> I took too long with the door. Um, there was a couple seconds there I wasted, pretty much. 
where I was stuck and I didn't start going up. It's a very finicky trick. It's not easy to set up, really. So let, let me do this again. The important part is that you move into the door after you move back. It takes a couple times to get it. And as you can see, now we're up here. So now we jump over here. There's no enemies like how there usually was, which is nice. Now when you go through this door, you want to have a low FPS. So you can force yourself through it and jump during this cutscene. And then you switch back to um, max FPS. Now you can go through this door, kind of crouch jump, kind of bunny hop. That noise happens, but there's no enemy, <laughs> which I guess is nice. Move that, because you can get permanently stuck on it. And we gotta go, and now we just basically gotta leave. This one guy will be there, but he's not really a threat, you know. We can open these doors, luckily, and we leave. Sure, let me go back to the quick save I was at. Uh, let's save this one. So you see how I'm like in the floor here? Here, I'll load a, maybe one under that. Boom, so you see how I was at the top of the door there? I think it was this one, right? See how I'm at the top here? Sure, I can show an out-of-bounds per perspective. So here's where you enter, and here's the door, and here's where you have to go, up here. So this is kind of right where you need to go. There's just enough space here to get up through here. So anyways, let me, let me go grab the tape again. See through. Do, do, do. Oh. oh, where am I going? Right. So, the unfortunate thing with this skip is that we still have to get the other tape. So now we gotta go to the graveyard, which is to our right. Once we get to this thing, we go through here. We can move this. This will just sometimes fly away for no reason but yeah just remove the debris if you're a super cool red bunny hopper you can bunny hop along this whole thing and get some momentum and it's cool looking unlike that where I didn't do it <laughs> anyways so you gotta go here go to the left then to the right and then to the left. And grab our first tape. Even though we have the second one. And now we gotta leave. Kinda jump up here. It's a little weird. Now the reason why you definitely wanted to move the debris is that you can kind of get stuck permanently on it and you really don't want that to happen. So just make sure you move it out of the way. And we gotta go back down here, all the way down. Now there's a certain trick I'm gonna do. Because I trance the childhood friend, she's gonna still try and talk to me by walking to me. 
So what I did there is I was just a distance enough away that she would talk to me. What that should do is draw her down the alleyway once I come out, and then I'm going to get two free feeds. It's pretty good. So, right, every option for this one is just mashing one. Unfortunately, we have to watch this cutscene twice. And we have to exit um, Isaac's house twice. So It still saves us about two minutes over the old route. Now, once this starts happening, there's, like I said, a fade-in just like any other part. So I like to mash forward until I know I'm moving forward, and then I get myself over to the door quicker. Mash one here, and then we can just leave. From this position, you can get back at the door. So you just go right back in, just like uh, back at the nightclub. And we watch the tape again. the work of a fiend. Hand me the tape. There might be something on it that will give us some insight into what its motives are. I really wish we had a graveyard skip, because we would just skip all of this. It'd be so cool. Poor character model. Gets eaten all the time, fed off of. So again, same thing. Get closer to the door if we can. This one is just one and then three. We're done there. So again, here's the childhood friend. Nice little feed for us. Don't kill her though, because that'll waste your humanity. And then if this guy isn't walking anywhere annoying, we can just feed right off of this girl. You can stop feeding on anyone just by pressing F, and usually it'll save you a bit of animation. Um, because otherwise you like go through the whole rest of the feeding. So now we gotta go to King's Way. And we gotta fight our first actual fight of the game. Go through through the back door. Go up here. Sort of bunny hop or go along the wall. The weird thing with the wall here though is you can get stuck on this little thing. <laughs> uh, ah, all right. So um, getting through his house is pretty easy. Go through here, go down to the right, do a little shift jump. Now we want to go here, grab the blood packs that are in here. Now going down through here, change the FPS so you can open the door. And also that guy won't hit you. Then you can close the door on him and keep those guys out. Now at this point you want to switch to blood strike. Then we can walk down, trigger it right from there. One, one. Now it's just two all the way. Sometimes you can take out your gun, that's fun. Now what you want to do is you want to stand right around this pillar, and you kind of want to be looking at the uh, corner over here. Now what this does is, it'll make him warp more over here. If I do it right. There he is. Now it's, you can mash blood strike, and you can attack at the same time. Ah, he went to that corner. It's bad when he goes to this corner. It's not a good thing. Now use T. Get more blood. Now he's gonna go to the here. Yep. We need more blood. Alright, now, he's dead. He might warp another time. And if he does warp another time... What you want to do is you just want to walk up to him and make him warp again, and then he'll be dead. Then you go through here and you're in the sewers. Come down here, hit this. You want to hit this guy through the gate? Oh, that was really weird. Okay, usually he's like bouncing around, but that time he wasn't. That's cool. 
Now what you want to do here is you want to eat rats. Like I said, with quick feeding, rats instantly give you one blood point, so you can just feed off of them, and then just done. They only have one blood point anyways, unless you're Nosferatu, so just feed on them and you're done. What I like to do here is I like to get enough blood um, that it's overneath the this thing right here. I'm not exactly sure how much blood that is, but it's enough blood that I can use blood shield and blood, uh, ugh, get out of my way. Usually this guy's not right there. You can just hit this and they can't attack you when you're in the water. So, so we can go here, eat more rats, and we're going to go through this door right in front of us. Should be another rat. Yeah, here we go. Oh, I missed it. And then we go up here. Now, this is one of the areas where the community patch is fixed, but this patch is not. So we're going to go straight over to this door. Now, you see, this door is locked. But it's not locked from the other side if you hit it in the right place. So now what happens is you're in this part of the sewers. And the game assumes that the only that if this is your first time in this part of the sewers, then you must come out at this cutscene. And this cutscene warps you right to here. So now, where you were when you originally went into that door, you can see past this guy, is actually over to the right, and we want to go to the left. So it actually warps us closer to where we need to go, which is nice. Now that guy has a really annoying attack, and you can look at his butt every time. But you want to trance him because if he hits you with that green crap, here, oh, I was going to get hit by it to show you, but it slows you down and it's terrible. It's pretty much the worst attack in the game. Alright, now this guy's going to come. He's always here and he's annoying. And what you want to do is you want to hit those guys into a wall because then you can attack them quicker. So I should get here. See that guy? Okay, sometimes he moves closer to the door you want to go to. Sometimes you don't deal enough damage. <laughs> so now we want to go through this door. Again, use blood buff. Go through this door. Now, this door is finicky. So you want to open it at low FPS and you want to let it open all the way before you run into it. Otherwise, it's really easy to get stuck into. This is how my run died at the first SRGM. I got stuck and I had to no clip. And then this cutscene plays. The evil looking crazy vagina monster. Very scary, yes. Of course, we're not gonna fight this thing. We're just gonna go over here, crouch jump right into here, and peace out. Bit faster to jump. Alright, now we go over to the left. We can use this here, take a blood pack. Now we wanna raise up this to get blood shield. We have more than enough experience, so don't even worry about it. You don't really need to level up anything else, but if you were going to level up at this point, you'd want to spend the rest of the points now. Although you don't really need anything, you just need Blood Shield. So get Blood Shield. It's usually next after this. And you can use the ability even when it's green. So even though it says that you can't use it, you can. And what this lets us do is we can just jump all the way down here. Activate it. Oh, you don't want to get hit by the fans, obviously, but... It soaks up so much damage. It's just ridiculous. It's it's so much damage. Um, if you're low on blood, I like to feed here because there's a chance you can frenzy kind of easily. There's a chance that you can frenzy anytime you're at low blood, but it's like especially during this part for some reason. Um, also, optimally, you just want to start bunny hopping down here. But if you don't, you know, if you're not confident, you can get a little bit of speed going first. Because if you get hit, you're pretty much done. So all these places looked right. So it's left, then right. You want to take these slopes at an angle. Right, then left, then right again. You should be going upwards. You can get a really nice uh, glide there. You should see this guy. You don't save him, of course. But you need that key. So here we go, jump down here again, there's going to be another vagina monster thing, go to the left, 
Nice, I didn't get hit. So here we go, just keep going down here like so. Jump up to here. Hit this button. Now we can kind of jump. You can get right in front of the stairs. Um, if you jump faster than I did, I guess. And now we need to jump over. Maybe a little crouch jump usually helps. And now we're out of the sewers. And now Vampire just stopped working for no reason. <laughs> what the fuck? Quality games, gentlemen. Quality games. All right, so you're not really missing much. What you're basic, what you're basically missing is me coming out of the graveyard and going back to the taxi, which was exactly the same route that it was when we went to go fight Andre. So, yeah, great coded game. <laughs> Wonderful game. Um, so we're just gonna go right to the next part, which is here. Um, I'll even go back. Just to show you exactly where you end up with the uh, with the taxi. Basically, you end up all the way down here. You jump all the way down here, and you go through this door. Okay, so let me explain this area because what you're supposed to do is talk to Ming Zhao in here for the first time. Well, technically the second time, I guess. However, this area is actually connected with the future area behind it. For whatever reason, because you just come right back through here and you fight your way through the temple. Here, let me reload the Chinatown skip there. So instead what you can do, jump up here, and now trees are only solid from halfway up. So you can jump on top of them. Ain't that cool? Now from here you can jump on top of this light, and then on top of the roof. From here, there's this invisible barrier, but you can crouch jump on top of it. And now you can kind of bunny hop through here. So what this just did was skip pretty much all of Chinatown. But what I need to do is get in there, and I need to get underneath to this door. Now, I'm not supposed to be in this area. I'm supposed to just be talking to Ming Zhao, and it's supposed to be Elysium, which means I can't use my weapons, I can't use any of my disciplines. So I can't attack back at this point. This makes this part really hard because, you know, I can't attack them, and I have to go through a ton of guards, and I'm low level. So this is one of the hardest parts of the game. The strategy that I use to get through this is there's this tree here. So land here, I track these guys until the door opens. Usually the door opens faster than that. And then you see how this guy came out? He's the important guy. He's the guy you don't want to have hit you. He does a ton of damage. And he's the one who opens the door. So you run through here. You can use blood packs, thankfully. Oh my gosh, I'm getting destroyed. And you want to run past here. Oh, I'll get past it. Okay, or the door won't open. That's cool. <laughs> this part's giving me some issues now. You can crouch jump over them if they're blocking the door. Like, sometimes they just do that. Come on. There we go. There. Now I can shimmy past here. You want to get to the left here. You can usually just uh, hold A and W and and get through that guy. If he jumps, if he moves forward though, you're gonna have to jump over him. And sometimes he can walk back into the door. It's it's hard to get through, and you're just get, it's you're gonna have to practice it a whole bunch, pretty much. Okay, so now we're in here. We want to switch to trance through the fade in and go around here. There's gonna be a guy over here to the left. But he's only a yellow dude. The guys in yellow aren't as strong as the guys in black, and we can always overpower them with the feed with our strength at the moment. Oh, wait. That's the... It should only be two. Don't worry about it. I have a way more set up on this file than I should. So here we go. Come around the corner and just feed on this guy. For some reason in this part, you even though you end the feed early, you still go through the animations of feeding. I don't know why. 
Now you're supposed to go through this way and then through here because this door is supposed to be locked, but it's another one of those doors where you can open it from the other side. So you do that, trance this guy, switch your FPS, this is the door I was talking about earlier. You can get it to about there-ish, it doesn't matter, and go through, oh, there we go, go through this door. Now, this is the next area where you absolutely have to save and load, and you have to do it before you get to these two lamps. The reason why is that once you get past here, these things pop out of the door and you will not be able to move them unless you have save and loaded. I have no idea why, it just, that's how it works. So move this one, or I guess you can move this one, whatever. And now what you want to do is there's this guy over here. And if he detects you, he's going to spawn an arrow dude down here and some other guys over here. So what we used to do is we used to be all, you know, slow and, oh, we're going to trance you and, oh man, all these guys got summoned. That sucks. I'm going to reload. and Because now we know that you can just, it doesn't matter if they get triggered. Just trance this guy and follow this pattern. Go to the right, go around here, go all the way down and to the left. The reason why you do that, and it doesn't matter if these guys are following you, by the way. Oh, get out of the way, I'm trying to show people shit. Is if you do go through the wrong areas of the wall, there's these guys who pop out of the drought. And these guys who pop out of the wall are the trigger for another set of guards in the next area. And those guys in the next area, there's four, or three or four of them they will constantly respawn, even if you kill them. So it's very important that you don't trigger these guys. So it used to be really important that uh, we used to go through this way and we trance this guy and feed off of him and then trance off this guy and feed off of him, which I guess is fine if you want blood, but it's a lot easier just to go past him. You can also try and get a a trance on him as you bunny hop past. It's another option. You can also get out there. You can also just go so fast that he just doesn't see you. Which I guess was what would be optimal. So again, and of course you can bunny hop through there. Now you have to interact with this physics puzzle. So switch your FPS. Get this onto here. You can then activate this one. And slip down here. Oh, damn. What a jerk. <laughs> now you can get through this door. Okay. This is the hardest area of the game. Hands down. More than any other place in this whole game. This is what makes or breaks your run. Now, again, if you trigger the guys, they'll be in this very first room. And you'll know that you screwed up. So what you want to do... If you need blood, trance this guy, as otherwise he'll summon all the rest of them to attack you while you're feeding off of him. You can't go quick enough that you can just feed off of him without needing the trance, but um, it's not worth really the chance that you trigger the rest of them, because you want to save the other two as pretty much blood packs for later on. So, after you feed on this guy, which... Um, optimally will be like right here if you do it inside the doors they'll actually see you and come attack you so you do have to wait and he like starts off like over here ish so you have to wait for him to walk all the way over here before you feed on him doesn't matter if you uh trance them or not so you would feed on him here and then you're gonna go back this way now there's two sets of statues you need to get i'll go on a no clip to show you I could spell no clip. There we go. Okay. So there's the first set of guys. There's two bow, fire bow airmen, which is the deadliest weapon in this game, I think. So you need to grab that statue and you need to grab that statue. But you see how there's a little divot in the floor there? Those are floor spikes, which through this little slit I'm looking through, there are giant like razors that come out of these floors and they'll kill you. And oddly enough, they only hurt you. They don't actually hurt the other enemies that could be chasing you through here. So that's annoying. So what you want to do is 
Turn on... Oh, I have so many extra skills. Turn on Blood Shield so that you don't take as much damage. And then... Oh, I just got hit by the uh, blade from the inside there. <laughs> Hold on. I'll just try and go through it. So usually I wait here. Wait for this guy to go past. Trance. Switch to Blood Shield here. Do the quick speed. Go back. Set Blood Boil. Trance. Trance one of them. Switch to Purge. Go the other way. You want to jump over that and purge both of them. Now you have to go the other way. Oh. They hit you with a projectile there. You can really get going. Now, you can get some speed through here by crouching like this. You want to switch back to Trance. And Trance this guy. Get your health back and get your blood back. You can't do this if they all attack you. That's why it's kind of delicate to make sure that they don't do that. Now this guy will come after you. You can do that. These guys are the harder ones. I just go straight for this and go for the purge here. Then you can switch. Oh, yeah, don't trigger those. Or if you do, don't get hit by them. And then boom, you're out. Now we can get our final feed. And the bow arrowmen, they never actually come out of those little corners. So once you're out of there, you're out of there. That's pretty nice. Now you would go through... Where am I going? <laughs> go back to the main room. Uh, this statue here is Dragon. This statue here is the Cat. This statue here is the Elephant. And the last statue is the Pelican. Now you want to be standing as far away from this last one as you can. Because as you put it in, you automatically go to the warp zone. Otherwise, you have to click out of it, and it's this whole ordeal and whatnot. Okay, so here we're going to switch to Blood Strike. The option here is three, one, two, one, 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 four, one, one, and we're done. So again, Switch to Blood Strike, and now we're just gonna Blood Strike the shit out of her while we attack her. Just like Andre. We're gonna use all of our blood uh, packs at this point. So when you run out, just use more. Now, you see how it's returning me blood? So if you have used too many blood packs at this point, you can just wait for some blood to come back. Now we use our Elder Vitae, which you see gives us tons of blood. Use both of them. Go back this way, get our key, and then we warp back here. This is our second final conversation. Here we're going to hit three. One, one, two, one, one, two, and then one all the way. Okay. So, let me explain what happened here. This is now the end of the game. This is the very last area. We've, we're done now. The only chance that your run can die is Officer Chunk Softlock's on you right now. <laughs> so don't let that happen. That, that would be really disappointing. Um, but what happened there is, um, when I leave Ming Zhao's area, the game is now confused as to where you could possibly be. And so it warps you to the taxi cab ride which is actually the conversation you're having after you fought the werewolf now of course we didn't fight the werewolf and really the, you can choose to go to some of the other factions and you know choose some of the other endings but i believe that the only one that actually works is siding with lacroix so that's what we did we sided with lacroix and we're going to talk to the officer chunk He'll say, okay, great, he's done with, you got through Officer Chunk, and as soon as you hit this button and the loading screen finishes, that's time. <laughs> so, Ming Zhao is dead, and soon all her devils will share their fate. Los Angeles at last is mine. Come, stand next to me while we open the sarcophagus. You've earned a yeah, it's also definitely faster. 
Um, just to end it with LaCroix. He just goes straight to him. Who sleeps within you? Is it Balthazar? Maybe Lazarus? Or am I to be reunited with Ventry himself? So yeah, that's how you uh, that's how you run Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Um, 